Good morning, kids. Welcome back to Children's Church. Online! How cool is this? That we can all still meet together, uh, even though we're all in our own homes. How cool is this? Praise God for what God has done with technology, right? So, so great to have you back with us this week, and a special welcome to anybody joining us for the first time who just found out about our children's ministry page on the website. It's so great to have you guys here with us. Uh, my name is John Motley. For those of you who don't know me, I'm one of the elders here at CCOB and uh, children's ministry overseer. But most of you kids probably know me better as, hey, isn't, isn't it that guy from that children's ministry who's always in the hallway? Yeah, that's me. I'm that guy. And uh, I'm here to bring the Word of God to you guys this morning, and I'm really excited to do it. I miss meeting with everybody, so this is, uh, this is as close as we're going to have. A um, couple of things real quick. We encourage you parents to stick around for this morning's lesson. A huge part of children's ministry is the interactions that uh, the teachers would usually have with their children. And uh, even if we did do this live, I couldn't meaningfully interact with every single one of your kids. Um, that's why we have so many classrooms at church. So I encourage you guys to sit with us, sit with your children for this. Hit the pause button when there's something really special that, uh, or if your child has a question, um, uh, pause, answer the question right there, interact with them, and you know I'll be here waiting for you when the when when the time's ready. So anyway. Definitely take advantage of that option. Um, I'm going to even invite you guys on a couple of occasions to pause the video and interact on a couple of themes that we're going to cover this morning. So definitely look forward to that and be expecting that. So a couple of last things really, really quick. You can find all the materials for this morning's lesson, the class notes, the coloring sheets, uh, the take-home take sheets. Uh, we have all available down there in the description section. The class notes are in a very clever word search format for this morning, so definitely print these before you guys get started. You can pause me and print all that stuff right now. I promise you I won't be offended. Now that we're ready, uh, let's uh, jump into it. Let's uh, open up the Word of God this morning. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 25. But uh, one last thing even before that, let's spend a minute in prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for this opportunity to, uh, to spend time with each other this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you for all the things that you've done for us. Thank you for sending your son to die for us and so that we could live in you, Lord. So Father, I pray that this morning as we open up your word, that you would speak to us and that we would learn something new about you and about ourselves that perhaps we never knew before. So God, use us and speak to us during this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you very much. Like I said, turn to the book of Genesis, chapter 25. That's where we're going to park it. Um, so we've, as we've been going through the book of Genesis, we've seen that God had a plan from the beginning to send a Savior, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins. He promised the Savior to Adam and Eve, and then to Abraham. And from Abraham, he promised that the same promise passed on to his son, Isaac. And so the last time we met, God had provided a wife for Isaac from the relatives of Abraham. Do you guys remember what her name was? It's an open Bible exam. You can look back one chapter and you can see. It's Rebecca. It's Rebecca was his wife's name. And uh, today, we are, um, yeah, Rebecca left her home and her family in Haran to become Isaac's wife. And today, we're going to learn about Isaac and Rebecca's children. Their children were important because one of them was going to inherit Abraham's special promise that he got from God, that the Savior was going to come from them. What an amazing promise that was. So, remember how Abraham and Sarah were really old and they couldn't have children or they, couldn't, they, were, they tried and they couldn't have children? God had to miraculously give them Isaac. And well, God had to work a different kind of miracle for Isaac and Rebecca too. So let's read about it. Let's turn to Genesis chapter 25. We're going to start in verses 21. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his plea. And Rebecca, his wife, conceived. But the children struggled together within her. And so she said, if all is well, then why am I like this? So she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb. 
Two people shall be separated from your body. One people shall be stronger than the other, and the older shall serve the younger. So what was Rebecca's problem in verse 21? Again, open Bible exam. You guys tell me. You guys pause it and tell your parents. What was her problem? The Bible says she was barren. What does that mean? Well, but barren means that she couldn't have any children. And so what did Isaac do in verse 21? He prayed to the Lord. Yes, he prayed, talking to God. As the Bible says, like a man speaks to his friend, we can pray to God. And uh, Isaac prayed and asked God to give them a child. And God answered. And Rebekah became pregnant. Have you ever prayed for something? Has God ever, has God ever answered one of your prayers? What about you, Mom and Dad? Has God ever answered one of your prayers? Why don't we take this moment and pause the video right now, and why don't you talk with your child about something God has answered in your life or something miraculous God has done for you? Like I said, you can pause me right now. I won't be offended. I hope that was a great discussion. I hope you guys uh, really had a, a solid time talking about some amazing things that God did. Um, God, uh, actually, I actually had a similar prayer to God about five years ago that God answered in a very powerful way. And, um, and uh, I'll talk about that in just a little bit, but I was really grateful for what the Lord did. So what was happening to, God, to Rebecca in verse 22? It says that the children, the babies, struggled within her. Have you ever felt a baby moving against mommy's tummy? While it's normal and exciting to have an unborn baby moving around, Rebecca felt that something was different about her pregnancy. And so she went to the Lord. And notice the Bible says children and not just child. What does that mean, guys? I mean, she was expecting twins. How exciting. Twins. God didn't, didn't just give them one child. He gave them two. How how like that is our God? You pray for one and you get two things of what you prayed for. Sometimes God does that, and that's just amazing. So how many of you know somebody who's a twin? I'd ask for a show of hands, but I kind of can't see that. I know a pair of twins. In fact, I have a pair of twins at my house. My, two of my daughters are twins. Um, and that was how God answered my prayer. My wife and I were praying for a child, and God sent two beautiful baby girls. And, uh, and just how awesome was that? Twins are awesome. So Rebecca prayed and asked God what was happening, and God told her she was going to have twins, and that each child was going to become a nation of people. What else did God say about the twins at the end of verse 23? He said one would be stronger than the other that the older would serve the younger. See, back in Isaac's day, the firstborn son was special. He received a double portion of the inheritance and became a leader in the family. The younger brothers and sisters served the oldest, but God said that the older twin was gonna serve the younger in Isaac's family. So this was something special. This was an important prophecy. So let's go back to those class notes because if you're paying attention, we have already have a few of these answers. So if you go to number one, let's look at that, complete number one. God gave Isaac and Rebecca for number one, what boys? Twin boys, of course. And then number two, God told Rebecca that the older brother would serve the younger brother. So you guys can write that in. And number three, blank was born first. He looked red and hairy. Okay, we're going to get to that one. <laughs> so the twins are born. Some twins are born alike, and those are called identical twins, where they look very, very similar. And some people may not be able to tell them apart. Other twins might look very different from one another, and, that, and that's what we end up having here. My, tw my twins were that kind. They were very, very different children. Um, I have one of them that is just very extroverted, wants to talk to everybody, wants to talk to every single person in the room and tell them all the great things that they find exciting that day. My other one's a little bit more introverted. Uh, she'd rather just be by herself. I remember one time I found out the hard way that she was introverted. She was, um, she was in a crowded room. We had a lot of people over and everyone was talking. The, there would be music playing. It was a very loud room. And she, I could tell she was getting frustrated. And she goes up to her younger, to her, to her other twin, 
pushes her to the ground and then just looks right up at me and goes, time out? Time out? Okay, I go to time out now. She, she wanted to have a time out. And she thrived on those things. So that was the day I found out, okay, we need to discipline her a little bit differently. So anyway, some twins can be very different. Um, so every Because every person is special. Every person is made differently from God. Uh, what about you? How are you different from your brothers and sisters? In what ways have God made you special? Even from people who are very close to you. Maybe how God has made you different than even your siblings or your best friends. Something to talk about. Anyway, let's read the description of Isaac and Rebecca's twins. Did they look the same or different? Verse 24. So when her days were fulfilled for her to give birth, indeed, there were twins in her womb. And when the first came out, red, he was like a, he was like a hairy garment all over. So they called his name Esau. Afterwards, his brother came out and his hand took hold of Esau's heel. And so he was called Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when he bore them. So what did, the, what did Esau, the older twin, look like? Look back in, in the scripture. He looked very unique, right? He was all red and hairy. Doesn't sound like a cute baby, does him? <laughs> His parents actually named him on, based on how he looked. Esau means the hairy one. <laughs> so that's an easy way to remember him. What about Jacob? What was he doing in verse 26? He was holding on to Esau's heel. That's interesting. And so the name ja they named him Jacob, which means to take by the heel. It can also mean one who schemes or takes the place of another person who deceives. So that's, that's kind of an interesting name to give your child, right? What does deceive mean anyway? It means to make someone believe something on, on purpose that isn't true. So that's not good. So... Um, Jacob and Esau not only looked different, but they also liked to do different things, we find out, as they grow a little bit older. When the twins grew up, Esau became this skilled hunter going out into the field, hunt, hunting and capturing animals so that the family could eat. Um, Jacob, Jacob liked to stay home. He liked to cook and take care of the animals. So they were very different types of people. So if we go to back to our class notes, we're going to find a few more answers that um, Esau was born first, and he looked red and hairy. And uh, number four, Jacob grabbed his brother's heel, H-E-E-L, when he was born, number four. And Esau liked to hunt outside or outdoors when Jacob liked to stay at I like to stay home. All right, so hope you guys are following along with me so far. Sadly, as the twins grew, Isaac and Rebecca, they made a mistake that parents do sometimes, because you do know parents make mistakes, right? Yeah. They made mistakes by picking favorite children. Isaac loved Esau more than Jacob because he liked to eat the meat that Esau brought back after a big hunt. But Rebecca loved Jacob more than Esau. And when parents choose favorites, it can, it can lead to some hurt feelings. And it's really sad when that happens. And plus, of course, the Jacob, uh, Esau, the older son, would inherit a double portion of his father's wealth and become the head of the family when his father died. That's what was known as the birthright. We're going to talk more about that in a minute. So hold on to that and try to remember that word, birthright. Now, how would you feel if you knew that your older brother will get twice as much as you from your parents and that they would be the one in charge of everything? Wouldn't really feel good, would it? Now, most of us would feel jealous or think that it wasn't fair. But it's, it's just the way that things worked back then. However, God told Rebecca that her youngest son, Jacob, would be the one that would lead the family and not Esau. That was interesting. This was different than the way the whole world did things back then. So it's really special. So let's continue reading to see what Esau thought about his birthright. Did he appreciate all the benefits of being a firstborn? 
Let's find out. Go to, uh, let's pick up in verse 29. Now Jacob cooked a stew, and Esau came in from the field, and he was weary. And Esau said to Jacob, Please feed me with some of the red stew, for I am weary. And therefore his name was called Edom. But Jacob said, Well, sell me your birthright as of this day. And Esau said, Look, I'm about to die. What is this birthright to me? And Jacob said, Swear to me that this day. And he swore to him, and he sold his birthright to Jacob. And Jacob gave Esau bread and stew and lentils. And thus he ate, he drank and arose and went on his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright, it says. So, from our reading, started with Jacob cooking up this delicious stew and Esau coming out of the field. Of course, what do you think Esau was doing coming out of the field? He was hunting, of course, right? Esau was a hunter. So he probably came back from trying to shoot something to eat. And when he returned, he was tired and hungry. And what did he smell coming in when he came home? It was Jacob's stew. Uh-oh, he smelled something delicious. And having have you ever been really hungry and you come home and you just taste, you smell your favorite meal cooking? Oh, there's nothing better than that. That's so, mm, that's so good. Well, that's how Esau felt. After a long day outdoors, he wanted nothing more than a good meal. His stomach was probably growling. And when he neared the tent, he smelled lentil stew. Does anyone know what a lentil is? It's, it's, it, it's a little, it's a little like bean. It's like a bean or a pea. It's small and round and comes in a variety of colors like red, green, or brown. And uh, they're often used in soups and stews, especially back then. They still are, though. So what color was the stew that Jacob made? It's in verse 30. Take a look. It's red. It's a red stew. So Jacob used red lentils, or maybe he was making a special seasoning to make the stew turn red. The color red is important because that's where we get the name Esau from. So it's just kind of something interesting is going on there. So what's the other name given for Esau in verse 30? Edom. Because Esau was also called Edom, which also means red. And Esau's descendants became known as the Edomites. So when we see them, as we continue going through the scriptures, when we see the Edomites, we know that it's referring to the people of Esau. So let's go back to our verses. Uh, we see that instead of giving his brother some food, Jacob decided to take advantage of the situation, trying to get something for himself. What did he ask Esau to do for some stew? What did he ask him to sell him? It's in verse 31. It's his birthright. Remember that word? Remember I told you to remember that because there's something important about that? The birthright was a big deal. It included a double portion of his father's wealth. Flocks, herds, tents, gold, servants. Don't you think those things are worth a lot more than just a little bit of stew? You think this was maybe not the best decision Esau could have made? Well, yeah. And do you really think, you know, think about it for a second, guys. We, we exaggerate sometimes. Sometimes we say things we don't necessarily mean. Like, if he's coming up and he's really hungry, he's coming in for the field, do you really think he's about to die because he's so hungry? Or do you think he's maybe saying it a little stronger than he needed to? And yeah, I mean, do you think that there was no other food around in the entire camp where they were living at the time? Uh, of course, there was something else for him to eat that he didn't have to sell his entire birthright. But Esau showed here that he wasn't patient and that he wanted to satisfy his hunger more than he cared about his position as the oldest son and the special blessing of being the firstborn, having this birthright. So Esau sold his birthright to his younger brother and ate his meal. And he let his sense of smell and desire for food lead to a really bad decision. So what did Esau think about his birthright? If you look at me with uh, verse 34, it says Esau despised his birthright. What does despise mean? 
especially in this verse. What does that mean? Well, despise can mean to dislike something or someone, but in this verse, it means to think of it as something that's worthless, something that's not worth anything. So Esau didn't think his birthright was worth anything. It was worthless to him. So he sold it for a bowl of stew. Notice that after he ate and drank, Esau rose and went his way afterwards. It shows that he wasn't sad or remorseful that he had just sold his birthright. He didn't even care that he lost it just there. I don't think he really appreciated it. This really shows us the heart of Esau. They cared more about satisfying his earthly desires than about the blessing of being the firstborn son. He was impulsive, which means he didn't stop and think about decisions until he'd already made them. And he wasn't even sorry that he lost his birthright. So we learned some things about Jacob, too. We learned that he cared about the birthright. He, he deceived his way into getting it. But he had to take advantage of his brother to do it. See, Jacob knew about God's prophecy to his mother and that the older would serve the younger. He remembered that promise. But he didn't wait for God to work that all out. Instead, he tried to help God by getting the birthright himself. Guys, does God need our help? Of course not. Abraham and, and Sarah, Isaac's parents, also tried to help God just a couple of chapters ago in Genesis chapter 16. It didn't go very well for them. You guys can check it out for yourself. You can uh, read that later with your parents and ask them about it if you like. Uh, so let's just quickly wrap some things up real quick. Go back to our class notes. So Esau wanted some of Jacob's lentil stew when he got back from hunting. And Esau sold his what to Jacob for a bowl of stew. He sold his birthright. Big word there for... For number eight. So anyway, um, God, God again showed that he is faithful to fulfill his promises. He did answer Isaac's prayer to give him, to give Rebekah and Isaac children. They had twin boys, Esau and Jacob. Which twin was born first? Do you guys remember? It was Esau. But Jacob would be the one to get the blessing now. So the as the firstborn, Esau had the birthright, which included the double portion, twice as much stuff that, he, that his brother was going to get from his father's inheritance and the responsibility to lead his family and to make decisions. But Esau cared more about food. And after one long day, Esau came home and smelled this delicious stew cooking. And Jacob, as soon as he made the stew, Esau asked for some. But instead of giving his brother some stew... Jacob was bargaining with Esau and asked him to sell his birthright for some food. Esau should have said that because his birthright was worth so much more than a bowl of soup that he was going to hold on to it no matter how good looking or how good smelling that stew was going to be. But Esau let his appetite, what he wanted to do right then and there, decide what he was going to do and lead him to some really bad decisions. And he sold his, his birthright to Jacob. So what word did we learn that means that Esau viewed his birthright as worthless? It says he despised it. Yes, Esau despised his birthright. So we see that these two brothers didn't value the same things. Esau cared more about hunting and eating, while Jacob cared more about God's prophecy. And they both sinned. Esau, by despising his birthright to Jacob and selling it to Jacob, and, and Jacob, by deceiving his brother, they both sinned. But God accomplished his purpose anyway. By giving Jacob the birthright, Esau would, have, would one day have to serve him, serve Jacob as the leader of the family and not be the leader himself. And the older would serve the younger. Now, God would have worked it out in his own time, but Jacob was impatient. Jacob tried to help God, and when we try to help God, bad things happen. We need to follow God's plan if we want God's true blessing. 
things probably would have worked out better for these twins as time goes by. They didn't always have a healthy relationship moving forward, and we're going to find out about that pretty soon. But in closing, have you guys ever wanted something that your brother or sister or friend maybe had? Maybe you saw something on TV that you really, really wanted. We may even be sneaky like Jacob to try to get what we want. Maybe we try to talk to mom or dad or try to get something for us. But when we do this, we can sin and get ourselves into trouble. It's best to be content and grateful for what God has already given us. And let him bring us the blessings that he wants to give us when the time is right, rather than trying to make it happen right now. We also have to be careful to not let our senses guide our decisions. We don't want to be like Esau, who, who let the smell and sight of food lead to a poor decision. But when we do sin, like both Jacob and Esau did, we should be quick to recognize it and ask for God's forgiveness. Let's not be like Esau and walk away from sin without caring. So let's go for that today. Let that be our prayer. Let that be our uh, encouragement for this week. It's been a pleasure being with you guys today. God bless you.